Hey guys, my name is Ethan and this is Cobra. Welcome to series I teach you how to build Discord.pub up for your server. Today we're talking about error handling, so let's get into it. Um, you can do the error handling, it's, it's best to do the error handling directly from here. So we're just going to be uh, editing the init.py again. Uh, so we're going to have two functions here. We're going to have async def on error, and that's going to take self, error, args, and quags. And we can pass that for now. And we're also going to set up our on command error. I haven't talked about commands yet, but it's just good to have um, uh, this here ready for them, really. <laughs> and we're going to pass that as well. Um, so with our on error, uh, all we're really going to do is uh, check to see what type of error it is. So we can uh, this error argument here is a string, uh, and it returns kind of the type of error or the function or something. I'm not 100% sure what it take uh, what it passes. All I know is that if it passes an error to do with a command, it passes the following string. It passes that. <laughs> Um, so if that's a thing, then we need to send a message back to the user saying that something went wrong. So we can just do uh, something simply like this, args zero, and I will explain this, uh, dot send, um, something went wrong. Um, and then we also need to raise. So <clears throat> uh, this function is basically just checking to see if the error type, I guess this would be called, um, equals on command error, which is something that Discord automatically passes through. If so, then args um, will, I believe, contain one element, and the first element of which will be an object that we can send a message back to. So arg0 is literally just kind of, you can sort of see it as channel um, equals arg0. That's not quite what it is, but we, we'll, uh, we'll get into more detail about that when we talk about commands. Um, and you, we just need to send uh, something to that object saying something went wrong. And then this raise thing uh, just uh, re-raises the error inside the shell so we can get a more detailed view of it. Um, and also works for logging too. On command error is a bit, is a little bit more complicated. So we have our cells, we have our uh, context, um, which <laughs> it's difficult to explain right now because again we haven't done commands. Um, and then exc is our exception object that gets passed directly into it. <clears throat> so we can actually um, uh, check to see if certain errors are a thing. So uh, if I just go up here real quick on my notes. Um, so you can have uh, if is instance. Uh, so the is instance oops, is instance. There we go. Uh, the is instance function is a built-in, so if you say is instance 5 int, that's going to return true. If you say 5 string, that's going to return false. It basically just compares a value against its type. So we want to see if our exception equals command not found. And we actually need to go up to the top and import from discord.commands command not found. Uh, and that's the only one we're going to do at the moment. We're probably going to... Um, uh, come back to this when we're doing commands, but I don't want to make it too complicated right now. Um, and we're just going to pass that. Essentially, if we if we try and call a command with a bot prefix, and the command isn't found, uh, if we if we don't do that, then it's always going to do something. If if you want it to say command not found when the when a user input the wrong command, you could do something like uh, await ctx send um, wrong command or something. That's generally rather heavily frowned upon. Uh, there's nothing stopping you from making kind of a, a system where it tries to look for a close match, um, but generally speaking, that's frowned upon. Uh, if you don't include these two lines and you th and you think of adding a bot to Discord bots, then forget it. Quite frankly, because they are not going to let your bot through. Um, Let's see what other types of errors we get down here. So, yeah, so we get a, a number of different errors, but we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna talk about them for now. Uh, so we're gonna else raise the exception dot original. Uh, if you don't raise the original one rather than the normal one, the exception is extremely long, um, and 
there is like a, a command inv invocation error that's essentially a wrapper on other errors. So ex uh, exe.original is just the original error. It's the only it's the only bit that's actually going to be of any use to you. Hey again, it's editing me. I know I said I hopefully wouldn't be back for a while, but I am. <laughs> I keep messing things up and forgetting stuff. Um, but yeah, this is this is a really simple thing. Um, essentially, while this sort of works, uh, there is something that I forgot. There is something that. Uh, that came up this time that didn't come up in the, the bot this is originally part of which is somewhat worrying um, but this exe the original is not always available so you will need to check if it's available first um, so for now we can just do an elif down here uh, has atra exec <clears throat> um, oh, and then in a string original and then if it has one raise that else just erase the standard exception. So basically what this does is it checks to see if the exception is command not found. If it's not, it checks to see if the exception has an attribute called original. Uh, if it does, it raises that instead because it just makes things a lot cleaner because everything gets wrapped into command invocation errors, which is really annoying. If it doesn't, it just raises the standard exception. Um, in, in videos to come, you'll probably see this looking a bit different um, because I've had to go back and edit this, but yeah. That's basically how you would do it. Uh, so I can't really demonstrate this right now. Uh, I'm just trying to think. I guess if we screw this up somewhere. So if we do that, um, I'll, sh I'll show you that it still errors out. There we go. So it still errors out. Um, although, of course, actually, we'll, 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 sh we'll show a little bit off. Um, so I actually have a. We'll just we'll just we'll just copy these this in here temporarily. Um, else, oops, we'll probably get rid of this later at some point. Um, an error occurred. Whoops. Now I don't think we can actually get the the trace back directly on this. It's kind of a bit annoying, but uh, um, well, we can, but it's more it's more effort than it's worth really um oh yeah because i fixed the code didn't i <laughs> i forgot about that uh that should also be 0.3 uh um or should it be 0.0.4 i feel as though i've lost track i haven't been doing the sort of version control i said i was going to uh we need to we need to break this again that and then we should yeah an error occurred so yeah we, we basically just have this little wrapper now that says that something wrong actually we might as well leave that there to be honest um, we, we don't really even need that in an else to be completely honest with you we can just send that anyway um, so yeah that is some very basic handling in discord.py there's not an awful lot to it we're gonna get way more into error handling when we're talking to commands um, but yeah, if you like the video and say hello down below, if you have any questions then feel free to leave them below as well, or join Discord in the description to ask your questions I suppose. Uh, if you really like the video then consider subscribing uh, and hearing the bell so you don't miss any future videos, and if you really really like the video then consider supporting me on Patreon, because that would be really cool of you, but of course you don't have to. Next time we are talking about scheduling tasks and stuff, um, including our database auto auto save system. Yeah, I did have that right. Um, so yeah, I'll see you then.